Hello and welcome to the weekly wrap up for this Friday, April 12th, 2024. Thank you for tuning in. We have a lot to cover as always, so let's dive right into it. Okay, so this week we had the whistleblower from Boeing, a new one, and I pray that many of you will get on there to check out that interview because it was a really good one and we uncovered a lot of information and we'll have this person on again next month. Uh, Andy Sheckman, we're in the process of finalizing a few things with edits. We should have that show out sometime between now and Monday. Really, really good show. And again, encourage you to take notes. He shares quite a bit of information. Of course, you see uh, we put out uh, Derek Johnson and Ann Vandersteel today, both excellent shows. And we pray that that is received well by you and the people in your circle. Uh, we will uh, be putting out Brent Johnson again sometime between today and tomorrow. And we'll be interviewing later on today, Dr. Scott Young of Nassar, who always has great musings. So we look forward to seeing what he has to say on the current affair of the affairs of the situation with respect to Nasara nationally. Okay, next week we have a shorter week. We have Ian Farrar of Perium. Uh, he's got some new products he wants to share that are very, very cool to helping people uh, continue to get restorative health while we wait for the uh, new patents and solutions, new slash old patents and solutions to be coming out in the not too distant future. And of course, our good friend David Mahoney will come in with some of his um, geopolitical insights that he always brings to the table. Okay, so let's get right into the headline news. So we have Sudani coming to the White House on Monday the 15th. As you know, Eid is ending here in the next couple of days. Um, he needs to end the currency auctions and launch the private sector. These are key factors in bringing back the reinstatement for the dinar that we're all well anticipating. Costco selling up to $200 million a month, according to Wells Fargo estimates in gold. And I'll be curious to see what the estimates are for silver as well. Zimbabwe, as you know, is making a move to back their RTG dollars with Zig Goldback dollars. Remember, they still have to remove the corruption. They have elections coming up in August with Chamisa, who is the people's president, much like President Trump here, as the countries copy each other and mirror each other. So it may take a little longer, but uh, the fact that they're releasing it now is an excellent sign for the beginning of the unveiling of the new asset backed system. O.J. Simpson dead as of yesterday, 76, died of cancer, but we yet it was pushing the jab. So draw your own conclusion there. FDIC, FDIC chief says he is looking forward to uh, being ready for the um, counter moves as the big banks fail. So they're already kind of telling you what they know is going to happen. Rite Aid to close 53 stores amid Chapter 11 proceedings. So more corporations in the old world going down. Israel has now officially announced to the world if slash when Iran attacks them that they will retaliate with an attack on the secret nuclear power plants. Uh, we're going to give acknowledgement to that person who, did, who gave that many years ago towards the end of the show here. Uh, let's see, on the uh, silver, gold, and oil front, we have, uh, let's see, we have oil up almost 2.5% to just under uh, $92 a barrel. Uh, and that's as of this broadcast, 2.5% for gold at 24.40 and silver uh, is around $29 now and four cents. So it's getting ready to hit that $30 mark, which uh, is going to send everything uh, moving more and more and more as the banks and the system are unraveling and losing control of their ability to suppress the precious metals market. Okay, now to the uh, commentary section. There's some things that I think we need to clear up and be on the same page, at least from our vantage point here with our team. Uh, there's a lot of rumors going around that uh, the U.S. is joining the BRICS. We can tell you there is no direct evidence, and we've shown that on our Telegram to support that case. Uh, for, as first of all, we've told you Chi and uh, Putin are very adamant they do not want the U.S. to be part of BRICS. They said that time and again, and we've shown articles in the past to establish that. What President Trump has actually done, and we put it on this morning in the Telegram, is he revised the Declaration of Independence in, in November 2020 prior to the fraudulent elections, which allowed states to self-govern, which is part of going back to being a constitutional restored republic. So Texas, Florida are already working right now, like Ann Vandersteel said yesterday, among 22 states to bring back a digital gold asset back token that is exclusive for that state. We do believe the states, many of them, probably, who knows, 35 or more will secede from the D.C., which is a foreign British corporation, is not part of the union. So many states may apply to join BRICS. Texas has already applied over, I mean, just under a year ago, and it takes about a year for countries or, in this case, states to be able to qualify and enter the BRICS. But uh, Texas has already started that process last year. 
Uh, so many states probably will secede from the union and join BRICS, but as a whole of the nation, we do not see that happening. We do not see any evidence to, to support that as it stands right now. So we just want to separate fact from fiction. Now, the prophecy about the nuclear power plants that we've talked about many times, we've never said that that was our original thought, but somebody had made a comment, I don't know, a month ago that uh, they had heard it many years ago, and they're correct, and we want to give credit where we always do, where credit is due. Matthew, aka Foot Forward, that's his channel on YouTube, had said five years ago, roughly, that this was going to come to pass. He was just being obedient with what the Lord shared for him to share with his respective audience. Now, I had a chance to talk to Matthew about five years ago. He's a good man. Um, he's an honoring man, and he is uh, just doing his part to be obedient during these critical times. So he did say that uh, many years ago. We put that on our, our broadcast on Telegram on Monday, so you can see that article there if you want to dial it back and look. We've given full credit to him, as is due him, for his obedience. So we just want to be clear about that. Uh, there's been many discussions from some of you about Bitcoin, about it being used for trafficking and laundering. First of all, let's get some facts straight. I don't own any Bitcoin at present because I don't have $70,000 burning a hole in my pocket at the moment. That will change. But the point of it is, is I have never owned Bitcoin to this point. Is it used for good and evil? Absolutely. So is the internet. So is everything that we've ever used. Many of you don't have any options. Some of you don't want to shop at Walmart or Target. I get that. But some, many people don't, depending where you live, don't have any other recourse to get products anywhere else other than, you know, Amazon and things like that. So, you know, if you can support patriot-oriented businesses, great. But not everybody has the ability or the wherewithal to do so at the present time. So has Bitcoin been used for evil? Yes. Has it been used for good? Yes. Is it a store of wealth? Well, nothing's backing it right now, but as you've seen on, some, or you will see on some of the shows, that is subject to change in the near future as well. The point is, it's a way to decentralize out of the central banking system. It can't be, uh, it's not going to be manipulated and all that, like what they can do with the CBDC and the dollar that we've known to present time. So if it's not for you, it's not for you, that's fine. But it doesn't mean that it's all good and that it's all bad. I mean, as an example, McDonald's, which I don't eat at, and I'm sure many of you don't eat at because we know what they put in that food. We know what they support. That's going to be changed in the future. That company will be broken up and it will be made whole again. And then you can decide if you want to reinvest at that time once it's going above board and, and doing honorable business. So just making a point there that, um, that you know, a lot of God's people will be able to get into Bitcoin at some point after the halvening when it's at a reasonable price, whatever that ends up being. And then good people can use it for the benefit of other people instead of nefarious purposes. So it's about discernment and taking action. That's really the point of that. Final point I want to make today is on a personal level. Uh, somebody made a very erroneous and mean-spirited comment that um, I'd only care about Christians and non-believers. <laughs> the fact is nothing could be further from the truth. You don't know me you don't know anything about me. Just because you see me on camera doesn't mean you know me personally. Don't ever get that twisted. That is a insulting and unfair and inaccurate comment. The reality is that I have a lot of friends that are not believers. And not once have I ever pushed my faith on them. If they ask me what I think about something, only then will I share my musings on it. I even have Christian friends where we don't agree politically or even on sports, which has no redeeming eternal value anyway. Am I a Christian? Yes. Am I happy to be so? Yes. I apologize for nothing with my faith. None of you should dare to ask me to do otherwise. If you don't like it, leave. We're not going to cater to your hatred and to your own issues. But that doesn't mean we push it on people just because, you know, I have that faith or other people have that faith. And for the record, I lost a very good friend, Darren, Mr. Trumptastic, like many of you did over nine months ago. I actually knew him, unlike some of you. I, I, I knew him personally. We talked on the phone. We broke bread a lot of times. Now, you talk about somebody we had, we came from different cultures, different parts of the world, uh, different faiths, different ideologies, but none of that mattered when we got together because God used it for this time. And not once did I push my beliefs on him. He knew where I stood. And I, I knew where he stood. And we talked about it, but it was never pushed to try to convert anyone. That's reality, okay? And the only consolation that I have with the loss of Darren is that I know where he is now. And that gives me the most peace that anyone could ever have. And, and I'm still, you know, praying over him, watching over his family the best that I can. And, uh, 
he was a good man and we shared a lot in common. We had a lot of differences. It didn't matter. Okay, so don't make statements that you don't have the facts, especially when you don't know somebody. Just way out of bounds. And, and on this note, Matthew 10, 33, where Jesus said, those of me who are ashamed on earth, I will be ashamed of them in heaven. I don't want to be in that list. So that's on you for making those judgmental comments. You had no right to do that. And we'll just leave it at that. That wraps it up for this week's video. Thanks for listening. We appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing you in the near future. Take care and God bless.